Thus far in the course, we haven't talked that much about activities, even though the word has been in every app that we've made. So an activity is essentially one of these. So it's a screen that's set up in a certain way with text views, images, etc. Now, of course, some apps, not that we've made any thus far, but some apps have more than one activity. And that can be a very useful thing. You might have a login screen, for example, on your first activity and then the main content of the app in the second activity. Now, in the favorite places app that we're going to make in the next lecture, we're going to need two activities. So this is a good time to bring in the ability to do that. So let's see how it all works. We'll start a new project. We'll call it multiple activities. And all the usual settings. And we'll start, as usual, with a blank activity. Although we might pay a little bit more attention this time to the different types of activity that we can have. So we've got a login one, a master detail flow, navigation draw, etc. You can imagine, I hope, what pretty much all of these do. A settings activity. But we'll keep it fairly simple now. Our essential aim here is we're going to have a first activity, which is essentially a list view or a table. And then when you tap various items in that list view, it will jump to the second activity and tell you which one you tapped. That's our main aim here. So here's now our first activity. So to add our second activity, we go over to the Java folder here and control click or right click and then go to new and we're going to add an activity. There we go. And you can see we can add all of those activity types that we had at the start, but we'll keep it simple and add a blank activity for now. So I'm going to call this just second activity and I'm going to leave everything else as the default. So now, unsurprisingly, we've now got two layouts. So we've got activity main and activity second, and we've also got two Java files. Now, if we run the app in this current state, it will show just the primary activity. So this one, if we just launch it there. And of course, there's no actual way to get to the second activity at the moment. So when we run that, all we see is the first activity. So the main thing we need to start off with is a way of getting from the first activity to the second. And you can imagine these a bit like links, links in a website that when you tap on them, take you from one page on the site to another. So we'll do it with a button. We'll drag in a button there. We'll call it change activity. And then we'll change the on click to change activity. Whoops. And then we'll need to jump over to mainactivity.java. You've got to be careful and make sure that you're editing the right file this time. And we'll create our method change activity called by a view and then here to switch to a new activity we create what's known as an intent which I think is fairly well named it's a description of an operation essentially so here we want to create an intent to switch to a different activity. So we'll create a new intent using the application context. And then we just want to jump to second activity. So you can see it's predicting that for us. And we want to jump to that particular class. So remember this second activity and all our code within it is essentially a class that contains methods and variables. So it's that that we're jumping to. So that's our intent 
that line on its own won't actually do anything. It will just create the intent. And to do it, we use start activity, and then we just give the intent. So that is I. And that's it. So if we now run that and tap the button, it will jump from the first activity to the second one. So change activity. There we go. Took a little while on the emulator. They're not that speedy, but it did get there. So here's a very quick challenge for you. Can you create a button on the second activity that jumps back to the first? Go for it. I hope you managed that one. Should have been fairly straightforward. We'll just drag our button in. Go back to first activity. And then change the on click. I'll just call it go back. And then editing second activity dot Java. We'll create our method again called go back. And then exactly the same. So intent I is a new intent. using the application context. And this time we're going to want to go back to main activity dot class. All right, let's do it. There we go. Simple as that. So now we should be able to jump back and forth between our two activities. So change activity there. There we go, go back to first activity, and there we are. Fantastic, so now we can switch back and forth. Another useful thing to be able to do is to pass variables from one activity to another. So we do that in our intent using i.put extra. And then we just give the name of our variable and the value. So let's have a variable called hello and give it a value of Rob. There we go. And you can see I've already got confused and I'm putting that in second activity.java. Make sure you don't do that. I'm going to put it in main activity.java. And then in second activity.java, we're going to receive that. So I'm going to do that down in on create. So we'll have another intent i, which is get intent. So this will get the intent that actually ended us up in this particular activity. And then from that, we can extract anything from it. Specifically, we can extract the data that's been passed, which we do using i.get. And you can see we have to specify the variable type here. So the variable type that we're getting is a string. So get string array extra, and then we just need the string name, which was hello. Like that. And that will then put that into a string, and we can just log that for now. So we'll call it sent data. is that and then add logs that's handy we've got that error i've chosen the wrong auto predict it should be get string not get string array obviously a string array would be an array of strings and we could pass that as well but here we're just passing a single string so let's just check now we should be able to jump from the first activity to the second and then it will display the value of that variable in the logs. Here we go. And there it is. 
sent data Rob. Fantastic. So now quite a big challenge for you, mostly because it will require you to remember how to add a table. But I want you to create a table on the first activity and then have four names of people in that table. It doesn't matter who they are, but four names. And then when you tap on one of those names, it jumps to the second activity and says hello and then whatever the name of that person is. Okay, so we want a list view on the first activity with four names on it and then you, when you tap on one of the names it jumps to the second activity and then says hello whatever the name that you tapped on. All right, go for it. All right, I hope you managed it. If not, don't worry, it's been a while since we've done list views. So I'm just going to start off in activity main.xml. I'm going to get rid of my button because we don't need that anymore and get rid of the text view as well. And then I'm going to bring in a list view. There we go. Very nice. Now we're going to populate that list view. I don't need my change activity method anymore. So in the onCreate method, I'll start by finding the list view. So let's create a list view variable, which we'll call list view. There's only one list view here, so we don't need to specify any more than that. And then find view by ID, r.id dot list view. Okay. Then we set up an array list to contain the names of the people. Array list. which will be full of strings, which I'll call friends. And then we'll add our items to those. So I'm going to have Monica. Oops, we do just need to initialize this using new array lists. And I'll just specify a string there as well. And then we'll have Chandler. You may or may not recognize these names. Joey. And Rachel. Apologies to Ross and Phoebe, but I did only say four. All right, now we've got our array list. We create our array adapter, which allows us to essentially transform our array list into a list view. So this is a new array adapter. And we're going to create it using this and then android.r. Dot layout dot simple list item one and we're going to create it from friends there we go and then we just apply that array adapter to our list view so list view set adapter array adapter and that's now created our list view all we need to add is the the code to do the transition to the second activity on the tap so we'll do that using list view dot set on click item listener sorry on item click listener and then we want a new adapter view let's bring that in dot on item click listener and then let's get all of that right yeah lovely and then let's implement the methods so on item click 
as we've seen before. So this method will happen when one of the table view items is clicked. And this is where we want to do the transition. So let's create our intent. So there's a new intent to get application context and second activity. So that capital S is important for the auto predict dot class. And let's spell intent correctly as well. And then let's save our name or the name of the person that's been tapped on. So I dot put extra. And I'll just call it name. And then to get the name, remember position is the number of the row that's been tapped on starting at zero. So that will be zero, one, two, three. So to get the actual name, we get it from friends dot get, and then we want to access the position that was tapped. Oh, okay, and as this is being accessed from an inner class here, we do need to declare that a final array list. Simple enough. Okay, and now all we need to do is update our second activity Java file so that it updates the hello world. So let's just, so that's called text view two. I think that'll be fine to leave it as that. So in on create, let's create a text view called text view two, which is going to be a text view and we're going to find it by its ID, r.id dot text view two. And then now instead of logging the data, we're going to take our text view and set the text to i dot get string extra, but it's not hello this time. It was name. And there we go. Let's take a look. So we've created our text view. We've filled it with these four values and then we've added an on click listener so that when it's tapped, an intent is created to jump to the second activity. I've just realized though that we haven't actually started the activity. So let's do that and run it again. And of course, within that intent, we've saved the name of the person that was tapped on, which is then passed on to second activity, which then gets it from the intent and updates the text view with that value. All right, so there's our list. Let's try Joey, tap on there and fantastic. Go back to first activity, Monica, brilliant. There you go, just a slight edit there. I think I did say that I wanted the text to say hello and then that one. There we go. So now you know how to switch between multiple activities and even to create a list view which jumps from one activity to another and passes some information to that second activity. We're going to be using that very much in our next and final app for this section, Memorable Places.